What's going on, YouTube? This is your friendly neighborhood DraftKings Attic, bringing my top picks for Friday's main NBA DFS slate. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get into it. Before we get started, go ahead and drop that like button for me, please. Tap it real quick. All right, that really helps out the channel if you like the video. Also, if you're new to DraftKings Attic, thank you for stopping by and clicking on my thumbnail. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave to catch the daily NBA picks video. Also, Drop a comment below, guys. Let me know who you love and hate. We got a nice size slate for Friday, as always. So your input will be very valuable to the team. So drop your comments below who you love, who you hate. And um, let's get started. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about yesterday, man. If you played DFS yesterday, man, it was an awesome game last night between Houston and Golden State. James Harden went the you-know-what off. All righty, guys. So there was no video yesterday because it was a small three-game slate. But I did throw in a couple lineups, thankfully, and I uh, tripled my buy-in. But James Harden, man, like I said, guys, just get you some Harden, man. And look at that. Dude put up 91 DraftKings point to hit the game, winning three-pointer versus Golden State, man, to come back from 20 points, man. Also, DeMar DeRozan went off, couldn't miss. Couldn't get to Jamal Murray or Jokic. But, again, like I said, I still triple, triple my buy-in. I, I had some Klay Thompson as well. But let's go ahead and break in today's slate, guys. So we're going to go ahead and stop by Draft Dashboard. That's my research tool of choice. All right, that's a 30-day trial for $1. The link is in the description of the video. If you like what you see, go ahead and try it out. And as you can see, they're adding value every day, man. Now we have an NBA cheat sheet. All right, I'm not going to click on it because that wouldn't be fair to the people who are who are subscribed. But there are some um, picks in there. And, um, yeah, you go in there and they pretty much have some picks for each um, position pretty much. So let's go into the position optimizer. As you guys can see, I have 45 watch players. So that's quite a bit, man, but it's a 10-game slate, man. So if you don't like the big 10-game slates, you got a, a six-game turbo. And then you got a nice, nice little small two-game night nice slate. So um, you guys play the slate that you like, but I'm I'm mostly playing the uh, main slate. So let's break it down. So at point guard, you got Westbrook at the top. I'm not paying up for Westbrook in the discussion. 11K, like I say, the guy ain't putting up, you know, those numbers like my boy James Harden is. Um, so at 11.3K, I can't, I can't afford to pay for for Westbrook, man, even though he's in a decent matchup versus Portland. But Portland is, Portland is okay defense versus point guards, man. And Westbrook's shot has been garbage. You know, he gets a lot of peripherals when it comes to rebounds, steals, and assists, which kind of keeps him somewhere around 50 DraftKings points. But that's not good enough for a guy that's 11.3K. You know, we need, a, uh, we need a game like we had last night from Harden at 91. There you go. All right, so anywho, Devin Booker at 9K. I, I can mess with some Devin Booker at 9K versus the Clippers. In a nice high over and under game. I believe that game is right here. Nope. Where is it? Right there. 231 point over and under. Only a four point differential, man. So uh, that's a pretty high over and under, guys. So that means that Phoenix is going to score over 112 DraftKings points. I mean, not DraftKings points, but real life points. And Devin Booker is going to be a major part of that. So at 9K, yes, he has a little bit of price, but that should break down his ownership, and I did, I will have a couple of shares of Devin Booker. Um, Oladipo, um, this guy here, man, um, he's a peripheral guy, man. Scoring it, three-balling it, stealing it, rebounding it, assisting it. He does a little bit of everything, and he gets a nice matchup versus Chicago. Now, this is one of the lower over-and-under games, but with Oladipo, his usage is high. He's at 28% usage, and he's averaged 56 DraftKings points versus this team, Chicago. All righty, so 8.8K, I cannot ignore that. All righty. So that game is projected. Where is it at? Yeah, there we go. Ooh, a six-point differential. That's not that's not bad. So it's a pretty close game versus Indiana and Chicago. So yes, it is a low over and under game, but Victor Oladipo will be in the game and will be a part of most of those points that get put up, especially if Miles Turner sits because he's a game time decision right now. So that's something to keep an eye on. So I like Victor Oladipo. Um, Donovan Mitchell, if uh, we have Rubio sitting out again with his issue with his ribs or whatever it is, I think. No, left foot. All right, so he's uncertain for today's game. But if he's out versus Cleveland, I do like Donovan Mitchell, who has scored 50 and 32 the last two times these two teams met. And at 7.2K, that's not too bad. And again, I don't think this game, considering some of the value on the slate with the Lakers and the Clippers, Donovan will go uh, low on. So at 7.2K, I like him. Brandon Ingram, probably going to be a chalky play. Um, especially if Kyle Kuzma is announced out right now. Kuzma is dealing with some kind of issues. Um, I forgot what it was. I think it was his, um, 
Oh, man, was it his back or something? Anyway, long story short, Kuzma is questionable. He left the last game that they played early, and it's been out. He had to get an MRI. Yeah, I think he had a, a contusion on his back or something. So long story short, he's probably going to sit. So at 6.8K, this guy, a lot of people are going to play him because he's going to get added usage and added um, um, value when it comes to his 6.8 salary. If you look at his last two games, he's put up 40 and 48 in the last two games. So um, Brandon Ingram is coming to his own again with LeBron out and all the injuries. He should get an uptick in. In production same thing with Josh Hart man last two games this guys put up 40 DraftKings points again a, a high peripheral guy you know steals rebounds um, three-pointers um, scoring he, he does a little bit of everything so at 6.2 K I pretty much like the whole Lakers starting five man just to be honest and so if KCP or Lance Stevenson starts I like them too but right now KCP is my favorite Terry Rozier with uh, Kyrie out He's almost close to a lock at 6K. This guy should be able to get you 30-plus DraftKings points, which is five times value with upside. Uh, we've seen Rozier go off, and I believe they're at home. Are they at home? Yeah, Boston is at home. So in front of the home crowd. So that should be fun. So Terry Rozier is somebody that I will have a couple of shares of. And to pivot from Terry Rozier, I would go with uh, Emmanuel Moutier uh, at 6K going up against the Lakers. Yes, we can respect uh, Mr. Ball's um, – uh, that sounded funny. <laughs> uh, uh, so we can expect Ball to play good defense. But at 6 point, uh, 6K, this guy is playing a lot of minutes, and he's getting production when it comes to um, scoring the ball and assisting. So Emmanuel Moody is the guy that I would pivot from with Tevin Rozier in my GPPs if, uh, you know, if I feel the need to. Um, we got Malcolm Brogdon in a blowout game versus the Lakers. I'm not the Lakers versus ATL. Um, they're actually, I think it's a 15 point differential, 13.5. All right. But Brogdon's only 5.8 K gets a very nice matchup versus ATL, which is a nice matchup for guards. And so I like him and, um, what's that screw up name? Bledsoe. Oh my God. That dude has burned me so many times, but I'm going to take a couple stabs at him today. Darren Collison, again, the Chicago game is going to be a close game. And if you look at the history versus Chicago, uh, Mr. Collison has uh, done well. 38, 29, 21, 46, and 19. So three out of the five games that he's played against this team, he's done well. And at 5.6K, he should be able to get five times value or higher, depending on um, his uh, his role today. So Darren Collins is somebody I will be taking a couple stabs at. Uh, Dennis Schroeder, I'm done with that one. No thank you. Um, DJ Augustine, I will take a shot at him at 4.3K. Going up against Minnesota, they're getting Teague back, but Teague is not a guy you worried about defensively. And I believe, um, yeah, there we go. I just saw it. Dang it. So D. Rose is questionable for Friday now. So he may be out. Sound like he might be sitting, guys. Ooh, Bobby Portis is ruled out as well again. So Mike Conley on track to play. So if Conley plays, I definitely want some of that, man. Definitely give me some Conley. All right, this guy's going to smash today. All righty. So, Nip, oh, oh, we got an illness. So, Dwayne Wade is back. So, something to keep an eye on. But Marcus Smart, another guy that I like on this slate at 4.3K with Kyrie out. He's going to uh, be up in uh, production, most likely in minutes. Uh, he should get the start. If I remember correctly, is he starting? Yep, Marcus Smart is starting at shooting guard uh, versus Dallas. So, that over and under is not out yet. Interesting. I guess they're waiting on Markeith Morris uh, 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 news. Oops, no, I'm not joining. No, thank you. All right, so, anywho, Marcus Smart, definitely because of the minutes, should be a good play. Same thing with DeAnthony Melton. This guy's the starting point guard uh, for Phoenix. All right, playing somewhere around 25 or so minutes over the last three games. And so, um, yeah, a nice value play for a team that is projected to score over 112 uh, points, guys. All righty, at, at, at 3.7K. Ah, man, he's close to a damn lock in my opinion, especially in, uh, yeah, keep an eye on him. 3.7K should be a good play. If you look at his last three games, 23, 24, and 21, that's just because Devin Booker and some of the other guys on that Phoenix team takes a lot of usage. As you can see, this guy only has 18% usage, but the last time they played the uh, Clippers, he put up 33 DraftKings points. So um, I don't know if Booker was in that game or not, but at 3.7K, he's worth the shot. Uh, we talked about Lonzo Ball, man, 7.7K, scored 43 the last time he played versus New York. Should get, you know, some turnovers and uh, things of that nature, uh, probably some assists and stuff like that. So at 7.7K, um, I can take a shot at him. He's coming off of two bad games where he's been cold. 
But, hey, maybe this is a game at home against New York where he can uh, show out. D'Angelo Russell's just been on fire, man. 43-56 and 56 in his last two games. Yes, it's a pace down matchup versus Memphis on the road, I believe. I think uh, Memphis is at home. Yep, on the road. But this Brooklyn team puts up a lot of points. And this guy's been getting a lot of run. 33 and 34 um, minutes in the last two games that he's played. And he put up 43 and 56 DraftKings points. So, I like D. Russell, man, at 7.4K. Again, that game probably not going to get a lot of exposure on this slate. So, um, for your GPPs, I definitely like that because, again, the guy's going to be low on. Like I already told you guys, um, Mike Conley, I like him. If you look at it, he has destroyed Brooklyn in the past. 61, 47, and 45 is his average versus this team. All right, 36, 49, 33, and 35 in his last five actual games. But he has smashed Brooklyn in the past. He's at home. I like Mike Conley. And this game is projected to have, oh, no over and under yet. I guess it's depending on if Mike Conley is playing. But as we saw on Twitter, guys, Mike Conley is currently on track to play. So keep an eye on that news. But if he plays, I will have a couple of shares of him. Sweet Lou, he's been showing out a little bit lately. 37, 29, and 50, 41, and 41 in his last five games. As you can see, he's been kind of spotty versus Phoenix. With 18, 33, 18, 45, and 22. So I wouldn't call him a lock. But at 6.7K, this guy's playing somewhere around 30 minutes. Coming off the bench. Has a ton of usage. As you can see, 34, 31, and 32 in the last three games as far as his usage. So you can't ignore that. And at 6.7K, you definitely want to have him in your player pool. I talked about Bledsoe, man. This guy, he makes me nervous every time I say I want to play him. But at 6.6K, he's really cheap. In a very great matchup versus ATL where this guy's averaging somewhere around 30 minutes and he's averaging somewhere around 40 DraftKings points versus this ATL team. All right, and at 6.6K, I, I say we can't ignore him. I can't ignore him. CJ McCollum, again, a play on his history versus OKC. As you can see, 49, 53, 43, 29, and 24 in the last five games versus OKC. Yes, McCollum really hasn't been showing out in his last five games, but at 6.4K in one of the higher over and under games on the slate, and the late night hammer game, all right, the 9.30 p.m. game with a 223 point over and under. And right now, there's no differential, man. What the heck? Okay, so we'll see how that all plays out. But C.J. McCollum and Dame Lillard and Nurkic are going to have to put up big numbers to keep up with OKC. Um, so I do like um, C.J. McCollum. All right, Zach Levine, too cheap. Guy 6.3K. Um, his minutes are starting to creep up. He's averaging somewhere around 34 minutes. She'll be able to get us 35 or more DraftKings points, which is a little bit over five times value. So at 6.3K versus Zinni on the team, um, he's a good play in my opinion at home. Six-point differential. They traded away. Um, what's that guy's name? Yeah, whatever the shooting guard was for them. All right, so he's gone. So that could mean extra run for Mr. Levine. I know that Hutchinson kid is supposed to start, right? So, But I like Levine. Let's let's get some of that Levine, guys. So, um, J.J. Barrera, again, this guy's just a monster when he gets minutes. All right, last game he played, um, 13 minutes, put up 19 points. All right, he put up 40 points the last time they played Boston. And so at 4.4K, I like him. Again, just if he gets the minutes, man, he's going to smash. So give me some of that. Next up, Jeff Teague, man. It's been announced that he's going to be back and starting. All right, Jeff Teague, so. To me, that's an easy play. <laughs> All right. So he's 6.2K because he's coming off an injury. He's been out for a few games, right? But he should be good to go, man. And at 6K with the uh, possibility of Mr. Rose being out, um, I definitely like this guy at 6K. He only needs to build up like 30 DraftKings points to get you five-time value, which I think he can do. All righty. Versus Orlando. So I do like Jeff T. Next up, shooting guards. Let's go ahead and go into our shooting guards. So, again, guys, I know these are a lot of picks, man. Um, if you think that these are a lot of picks, just pick. Go go through the uh, over and unders. Pick some of the higher scoring games and some of the games that you like that are going to be close, all right? And then pick you the top two or three players from the teams that you feel like are going to score the most points. Those top two or three players, and you're good to go. But I'm just giving you guys a rundown of the players that I like as far as my player pool goes. Like I said, it's a 10-game slate, so I have a 45-player uh, um, pool. So, um, we already talked about some of these guys at the top, but Chris Milton is in a match up of the year at 7.3k. So this guy, if he don't smash value, man, I don't know what's going on. As you can see, um, 38, 
36, 54, and 19 in the last four matches versus ATL. So um, they're at home, if I remember correctly, right? Yep, at home in Milwaukee, 13 points favorites, man. Um, but if by chance this Atlanta team can stay with this Milwaukee team, um, man, this guy's going to be a super value. So I definitely like Mr. Middleton. We already talked about these guys, Josh Hart, Terry Rozier, KCP. Like I said, if uh, we find out that uh, Mr. Kuzma is out um, lately, KCP has been the one stepping up with 38 and 37 in the last two games, playing 28 and 34 minutes in the last two games. And so this guy's had success versus New York in the past. And so at 4.9K, he could be a decent play. Um, again, depending on who's starting. We already talked about Smart. Mr. Dunsick. All right, guys, this young cat, man, I love him. All right, he only played 26 minutes last game and still put up 40 DraftKings points. All right, so versus Boston, yes, it's not the best uh, matchup because this team has decent defense, but they have a lot of pieces missing in this game. It's projected to be a nice, close game, and so this guy, 7.4K, uh, I, I, like, I like him at 7.4K. Give me some Dunsick. All right, we already talked about Russell. We already talked about Sweet Lou already, Levine, Tim Hardaway Jr. All righty. 6.2K, that Lakers in New York game is projected to be a, oh, it hasn't been came out yet, I guess because of the whole Kuzma situation, but that should be a nice game with LeBron being out and some of the other major pieces being gone with Kuzma possibly being out. That could be a, be a nice close game. And that 6.2K, uh, Mr. Tim Hardaway Jr. is going to have to put up a lot of shots, shots to keep up with this Lakers team. So um, I definitely like Tim Hardaway Jr. Probably more of a GPP play, not a cash game play. So... All righty. So next up, guys, small uh, small forward. Let's see who we got. Of course, you know at the top we got Giannis Antetokounmpo. All right. Question is, do you think it's going to be a blowout or not? 11.7K. Does he put up 45 for you or does he put up 72 like he did in the last game versus ATL? So um, that's for you to decide. But I will have a, a couple of shares of uh, Mr. Antetokounmpo. I won't have a whole, whole lot. I'm probably going to be going with more of a, ba a balanced lineup today. On these larger slates, just because sometimes when you pay up for these guys, if your value don't hit and if they don't hit on top of that, the high dollar guys, your lineup sink fast. So keep that in mind. Paul George versus the uh, Portland. I don't know. That's a tough one. Paul George has been hot lately too, man. Um, That's a tough call for me, man. Right now, I think I'm going to be paying down that small forward and power forward. But, hey, you guys let me know. Do you like Paul George on the 10-game slate? All right, well, you have some nice matchups on this slate too, man. So next up, Tobias Harris at 7.1K going up against Phoenix. Yes, yes, and yes. All right, this guy scored 53, 36, 36, 61, and 31 versus Phoenix in the past. So give me some Tobias Harris. And same thing with Gallinari, man. Again, this Phoenix uh, LA Clippers game is one of my favorite games on the slate. All right, guys, so. Yep, 231 over and under, four-point differential. Two teams that don't really play good defense, so there should be a lot of scoring and rebounding and missed shots. So I, I, I like both of those guys, man. All right, Jeff Green. Again, if we find out, if I believe correctly, Washington, where are you at? Right here. Um, got Order Porter back, Brian. So Green getting a lot of minutes off the uh, bench with uh, Morris being out. So keep an eye on that. So, um, but... Jeff Green has been producing, man. 42 and 40 in the last two games. If you look at his history versus Miami, 35 and 30 in the last two games. So at 5K, a guy playing somewhere around 29 minutes a game off the bench, um, even with Porter back, Jeff Green could be a good play. So keep him in your, on your radar. Derrick Jones went off last game for 32 DraftKings points. Yeah, but I don't know if I'm going to play him, man. I don't think he's starting either, right? Miami? Nope, he's not starting. So he's coming off the bench. But, um, yeah, just something to consider there. Damari Carroll, again, playing somewhere around 30 minutes a game over the last three games, 30, 35, and 29. All right, and this guy has smashed versus Brooklyn in, I mean, Memphis in the past, 43, 34, and 41. All right, so he's getting the minutes, and he has great history versus this team. So, Damari Carroll, somebody you want on your, on your radar. Same thing with uh, Mr. Uh, Jay Crawford. All right, so... Again, last three games, um, he's only played 18 and 26 minutes. All right, but this guy has smashed versus Cleveland in the past. 35, 40, 18, 41, and 24. So let's see who we got starting right there. 
Utah. Ooh, that's the first game on the slate, too. Ooh. Yeah, I don't know about Crawford, guys, but he caught my eye just because of his history versus this team in the past. So I'm keeping him in my player pool, though, Mr. Crawford. All right, so we got Mr. Harkless here who's been playing good minutes and putting up good production at only 4.2K. They're going to need his rebounding and defense, all right, uh, versus OKC. So, Mr. Harkless, I'm adding him to my player pool. Like I said, he's had decent um, um, history versus uh, this team, and he's been playing. He's been getting the minutes lately, too. 29, 30, and 30 in his last three games played and playing somewhere around 30, 34 minutes or more. So, I do like Mr. Harkless. Throw him in there in my player pool. We're talking about Hardaway Jr. Mr. Barnes. All righty. Again, this Boston game is projected to be – well, actually, the projection's not out yet, but I think this will be a close game with Kyrie out. And a lot of injuries on the Boston side and all, as well with Dallas. And so at 5.6K, man, bigs normally do well versus Boston. All righty. And if you see right here, Harrison Barnes has fared well versus Boston in the past with 37 DraftKings points on average. All righty. So at 5.6K, man, he could be a good a good value play there, guys. Again, if you look at his last five games, um, he scored somewhere around 27 to 29 DraftKings points on average. But, again, some upside here with this Boston game. All right, should be a paced-up game. Gordon Hayward, ride the hot hand, coming off a 45-point game. He scored 49-45 and 45 versus Dallas in the past. Kyrie is out. He's going to be required to do more, All right, especially if Morris sits too. All righty. So, um, keep an eye out for that news. But if Morris is out again, I do like Mr. Gordon Hayward to smash again at 5.4K. So, get him in your, in your lineups, guys. So that's all my small forwards. So on to power forward. At power forward, we're definitely going to be um, looking at, uh, man, Tobias Harris. Aaron Gordon, uh, he too spotted for me. But if you look at his last three games, 44, 33, and 42, and he gets a matchup versus Minnesota. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to him. All right, I like Tobias at that same price in that Phoenix game, which is a much, much better matchup in my opinion. All right, so that's something to consider, though. Mr. Vonley, again, playing good minutes, 34, 23, and 34 in the last three games. Uh, I think that 23-minute uh, game was a blowout. Um, but this guy is 6.5K going up against the Lakers, which is a decent matchup um, when it comes to the team defense and the positional defense. So at 6.5K, I'm definitely considering a couple of shares of Vonley. Not a whole hell of a lot, but a few shares. Now, Mr. Marketing, yes. 6.5K. Again, I don't think there's going to be a lot of love shown to the Chicago-Indiana game, but I think a lot of the starters on both sides of this game are going to play a lot of minutes in a close matchup, and they're going to definitely be under under owned. So at 6.5K, marketing again with some of the uh, – with Holiday leaving, those shots got to go somewhere, man. And Hutchinson's not going to take all of them. If you look at Hutchinson's game log, the dude hadn't really done anything, man. So I don't even know – we don't know what to expect from him. But – Definitely like Laurie Marketing. Come on off the, uh, come on in there and, and show out. Next up, uh, we already talked about, oh, Mr. Cornette. Luke Cornette has been doing well as well. Again, 32, 32, 39 in the last three games. He gets a matchup versus the Laker at 5.4K. He's a starter now over, uh, yeah, he's a starter. So uh, at center. So definitely, definitely want some Cornette. He's been on fire. So I'm going to ride the hot hand, guys. Ride the hot hand. Not really that difficult. All right, so that's pretty much all my power fours. Of course, you got Thomas Bryant, man. This guy's been on fire too, but he gets a nice matchup versus Hassan Whiteside. All righty, and this guy's 6K, so his price is getting up there, but he's still a good value at 6K, guys. All right, I don't know if he's a lock versus Miami, in my opinion, but he's definitely in a good spot. All righty. Al Horford again, 6K, going up against uh, Dallas. All right, if you look at the history versus the team, He's put up 22, 51, 29, and 25. And at 6K, I just need about 30 DraftKings points from him. And um, I think he can get that for us, especially with Kyrie out. He's probably going to be taking a lot more shots than normal. And um, he's going to have DeAndre Jordan holding him, man. And um, Al Horford can definitely get it done. Averaging somewhere around 29 minutes. Morris may be out. So, again, extra usage for the other players. So, definitely considering some Al Horford, guys. Kevin Knox. In the starting role, going up against the Lakers at 5.9K. Yeah, averaging somewhere around 25 DraftKings points over the last four games. 
Ooh, that's a close one, man. Yeah, I'm going to give me some. That game, I like that game, too. So, Kevin Knox, throw him on in the mix. All right. How about Trevor Ariza versus Miami, guys? I don't have him in my player pool right now. You guys let me know what you think. To me, Trevor Ariza is too inconsistent. So, I can't take no chance on him on today's slate. Mr. Jaron Jackson. Look at that. Last time they played Brooklyn, this guy put up 50 DraftKings points. Woo. And at 5.6K, this kid's averaging somewhere around 26 DraftKings points, which is not bad for a guy that's 5.6K with some upside. So I will have some Jaron Jackson in some of my GPP lineups. Maybe not cash, but definitely a few GPP shares. Wendell Carter Jr., another guy. Some GPP shares for me at 4.9K. He scored 39 and 34 in the last two games versus his team. And again, we got uh, Miles Turner's uh, questionable. All right, we got a nice matchup versus Chicago. Um, this cat is going to get minutes if the game stays close. So coming off 31 and 45 in the last two games, and he only had one DraftKings points the last game. That was a blowout. They got the brakes beat off of him. All righty, so um, right now that game is not projected to be a blowout. But, hey, I like Wendell Carter at 4.9. Definitely GPP consideration in my opinion. All right, next up. Last but not least, the center spot. So at center, you got Carl Anthony Towns at the top. He gets his best bud, Mr. Teague, back. So that could mean some extra uh, help there as far as getting him the ball, clearing the way. So, but it's a tough matchup versus um, Orlando, man. Vucevic is a decent defender, man. So um, I don't know about Carl Anthony Towns, man, at 10K, almost 10K, you know. Um, yeah, so I'm on the fence about that one, guys. Let me know. Do you love Carl Anthony Towns on this slate? It's a 10-game slate, man. You got a lot of options. You can pay up in other spots, man. Center, you don't have to pay up for. Marcus All, I like him in this spot at 8.1K. Again, I think he's going to go on their own because Brooklyn is normally a slow-paced team. Uh, doesn't, you know, have a lot of possessions. There's only 205 point over and under. But at 8.1K, this guy has a decent usage. And it's him and Conley as far as the show goes, man. So, as you can see, he's put up 51, 28, 36, and 45 in the last five games versus Brooklyn. All right, they're at home. They're the favorite, if I remember correctly, right? Memphis, oh, nope, no over and under yet. So, um, anywho, I like Marcus Hall. DeAndre Aiden, he's probably my favorite center on the slate at 7.8K. This guy smashed last time they played the Clippers. Clippers is a nice matchup for bigs, as you can see. All right, so we got who? Gortat starting for the Clippers, if I remember correctly, right? So, yeah, Gortat, so come on now. DeAndre Aiden should, uh, Aiden should be able to eat on that. So, give me some DeAndre Aiden. If Miles Turner plays, ooh, he got a broken nose. Oh, my God. So, we'll see if he's playing. But 7.6K, he could be a decent play because Chicago gives it up to the bigs. So, keep him on your radar. But I don't know if he's going to play. I don't have him in my player pool right now. So, scratch that. Sabonis, yeah. If Turner's out, Sabonis could get the start right. So, he could be a good play. So, keep an eye on that. They're both around the same price, which is crazy. So, um, man, you got Steven Adams going up against Nurkic over there in Portland. Eh, no. Hassan Whiteside, if this guy gets the minutes, he could smash. The question is, will he get the minutes? Will he get 17 minutes or will he get 30 minutes? Who the hell knows, man? Flip a coin. But at 6.8K, you got to get a couple of shares of him. I wouldn't consider him a lock personally, you know, but they are at home, all right, versus Washington, who is normally a, a good play. Uh, for bigs, as you can see, with a 22 um, um, defensive ranking. So, 6.8K, not too bad for Hassan Whiteside, but just, hey, to me, he's not a lock. Because look at dude, dude, uh, you know, scoring log is trash. But Hassan Whiteside, that guy could put up 55 DraftKings points before you know it. Have a nice double-double. So, um, Von Lay already talked about Brooke Lopez has been hot lately. As you can see, 34-36 in his last two games at 5.7K. He gets a great plus, 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 plus matchup versus ATL um, with, the, like I say, blowout potential there at a 13-point differential. But Brooke Lopez, not a bad play at 5.7K. Alex Lynn just went the hell off, put up 42 DraftKings points. So between him and um, Deadman, who knows who you're going to play when it comes to the ATL big. So I'll pass on that one. DJ. Could be a decent play at 6.4K going up against Boston. Now, this guy only put up 28 DraftKings points in the last game that he played. But if you look at his history versus Boston, he's doing good when it comes to rebounding and, and putbacks and blocks. So, um, definitely, I'm going to have a couple of shares of DeAndre Jordan. 
All right, Thomas Brown, we already talked about Jaron Jackson. We already talked about Wendell Carter. And so it looks like that's all my plays, guys. That's all my, my quote-unquote favorite plays. That's my player pool for the most part. Now, keep it out on the news. Anything can come out and change that. So what you want to do is, guys, if you go into the link in, this, uh, in the description of this video, sign up for the free trial. Once you do so, if you go to the watch player list, you can go over and click watch DK Addicts picks, and that will load up my um, watch players into your watch player list. And then you can go over here to the lineup optimizer and build you an optimized lineup where if it does not spend all of the uh, salary, you can go in here and upgrade certain plays. Let's say you want to upgrade Mr. Melton for some reason. You can scroll down here and find another guy within that price range. It lets you know um, who's available and it kind of gives you that dash rank and everything like that. So I'm personally like this lineup, so I'm going to go ahead and hit save on it. Not too bad there. All right. But also we have a mass lineup generator, guys. Again, select. 10 to 100 line, uh, lineups to generate. Your randomness could be high, medium, or low. Your maximum exposure, and then click generate lineups, and you're good to go. And let Draft Dashboard build you a mass lineup. So let's go ahead and look at my quote-unquote locks or favorite plays. Right now, I like Jeff T going up against Orlando. Again, before this guy went out hurt, he was averaging somewhere around 25 to 35 DraftKings points, and he gets a nice matchup versus Orlando at home. Um, I think he's a little bit of a, of a quote unquote risky play because he's been out for a little while, but I don't see anything about him being um, on a minutes limit. And then if Derrick Rose is out, you know, that bumps up his usage, right? And we do have Tyus Jones there, but at 6.2K starting lineup, I think Teague is a good play um, and too cheap to pass. Um, Marcus Smart, I like him again. Um, going up against um, Dallas, he played 25 minutes the last time they played. And he put up 26 DraftKings points. He had a couple of assists, a couple of rebounds, steals, all right, and about 20 points. So um, this guy, again, peripheral guy going up against Dallas. He should be able to get, get some nice peripherals. Um, again, he's playing uh, somewhere around 25 to 30 minutes. And so um, with, Ty, uh, with, with uh, Mr. Kyrie out, I like Mr. Smart. Doncic, 7.4K. To me, he's an easy play, even though Boston is a quote-unquote good team defense. Uh, they're missing a, a bunch of pieces, and so – at 7.4K, this guy has a huge role over there in Dallas. He's pretty much the best player on the team. And at 7.4K, I'll take the discount. Gallinari, again, versus Phoenix, has smashed two games, averaging 45 DraftKings points, a nice uh, 26 points, a couple of blocks, seven to eight rebounds, a um, couple of assists. I like me some Gallinari, and he's playing good lately too. 36, 35, and 42 in his last three games versus Philly, San, San, San Antonio, and the Lakers. So, Gallinari, this is expected to be a close game versus Phoenix and um, should be fun. Highs over in the game, give me Gallinari. DeAndre Aiden, like I said, I like him versus the Clippers. The Clippers, this game, I love it. He's played two games versus them, averaging 29 minutes and 35 DraftKings points in that 7.8K. As we see, he has some upside versus Denver. He put up 61 DraftKings points. So at 7.8K, I'm taking a shot at DeAndre Aiden. Then, like I said, with Wendell Carter, I don't know why, but I just like this play. <laughs> at 5K, this guy just needs to get 25 DraftKings points. I think he's good for that. As long as he gets the minutes. As you can see, this game here, they got blew the hell out. <laughs> 84 to 112. So should be a much better game. They're at home. Uh, yeah, we'll see how that works. But 4.9K, as of right now, he's one of my favorites because of the value. And so... At least it's somewhere around 6.2K, guys. So now with my, my quote-unquote core plays, that does not mean I'm going to have every single one of these players in every single lineup. It just means when I'm building my lineup, most of these guys will be in my original building. So let's say, I don't know, I want to go up to a higher-paid guy at center like Towns or Vucevic or Gasol. I just take out that guy, put in him, and now I still got 6K left. Or let's say I want to go down, I can move Carter over here to my center and pay up at forward and put in like a Giannis or – or uh, Westbrook, right, and still has some some room for some value. So that's kind of how I do it, guys. So if we go back over to the draft dashboard, we can see our lineups. It generated us some lineups. As you can see, we have our projected points right here. All righty. And if you like a, a particular lineup, you just hit that little checkbox next to it. Or let's say you want to just run all of them. You select all, hit export selected lineups, and we'll download your CSV file as you can upload to either DraftKings or FanDuel. Yes, draft dashboard supports FanDuel. And we got MLB around the corner for next month. So we can definitely use it for that as well. So, all right, guys. So good luck on today's slate. I know the video went kind of long, but, you know, I'm pretty much going over my player pool. So uh, let me know, guys, um, who you love, who you hate. 
Don't forget to hit that like button before you leave, please. It really helps out the channel. And also, guys, don't forget to subscribe so that way you don't miss a video. All right, so peace. Good luck on Friday, guys, and we'll see you tomorrow on Saturday Slate.